Hey everyone, Foxy Goodbye. Games here. Today we're going to start uh, the beginning of a new Let's Play. Something a little bit different from my usual fare. We are going to play through the entirety of the Final Fantasy XIV storyline as it exists uh, in its current state. And probably beyond, because I'm sure it's going to take me at least a month to get up to max level. Um, so we're going to start a brand new character. Now, if you've watched my other Final Fantasy XIV videos, you'll know I typically play Emikote, and that's not going to be uh, any different this time. And it's going to be a lady, because we, we like the ladies here. Um, now, that's not to say I don't like the other um, the other races, specifically the Aura. I think they're really pretty. The Viera are really cool. But Viera can't wear hats. And that bothers me. It bothers me a lot, especially when I was playing uh, White Mage and Red Mage as a Viera. I just couldn't do it, so I changed back to Mikote. Maybe one day I'll make an Aura because, my god, they're so pretty. But, no, nah, we're going to be a cat this time. I think that's a good idea. We're going to go with Keepers of the Moon because I really like... Um, I really like that darker skin color. Um, I think we're going to stay somewhat on the shorter side this time. Um, I think her chest size... I mean, let's not let's not be judgy Jason over here, but I think her chest size is decent. Skin color. You know, I kind of really like this. They gave me a pretty good default. Like, you can get fucking pale, even as a Keeper of the Moon, but... Like, look at this. This ashy skin color is really cool. But I no, I kind of really like this. I think that's a really nice skin tone. Tail shape. I usually play with this tail shape. Let's go with something a little different. Let's go with something floofy, maybe? Yeah, you know what? I like the floof. Let's go with floof. Uh, tail length. We always go as long as possible with the tail. Hairstyle. Um, let's go through them. You know, that's kind of cute. That's like a is that a pixie cut? I don't know. You know, I really like this, but it's kind of been stolen by, like, Karens, so <laughs> I kind of don't want to do that. Um, that's kind of nice, too. Oh, that's neat, the way it goes back like that. This is cool, but kind of unrealistic. <laughs> I mean, what's realistic about a cat girl, but, you know. Again, Karen. Oh, Twin Tails. Twin Tails are cute. That's interesting. That looks like something from straight out of the 80s. Now, the reason I'm doing this is, first of all, because I love this game's story. You know, I kind of might stick with that. But that's what my other character has, so I want to go with something a little different. Um, long hair is cute. I really love this game's story, like, a lot. It, for, for an MMO... And for having a majorly silent protagonist, this game's story is phenomenal. Ooh, I like that. I, mean, I like girls with short hair. You know, I think that's really nice. I also like girls with long hair. Oh my god, we are not doing the fucking pompadour. <laughs> Maybe for a meme video one day. <laughs> but Foxy, all your videos are meme videos. Yes, yes, I'm aware of that. But yeah, this game's story is incredible. It's a bit slow at first. <laughs> That's the main complaint about this game's story, is it's a bit slow at first. And by a bit, I mean very slow. Very slow at first. I kind of like this with the headband and the long hair. We're going we're gonna to do that. Hair color... You can get some crazy hairstyles, or hair colors, rather, but we're going to go with something a little more realistic, I think. I already have dark skin white hair on another character, so... I already have red hair on a different one. Screw realism, we're going dark purple. Yeah, that looks great. Uh, face... Kind of like the first one. Jaw... It looks good. Eye shape. Kind of like number three better. 
Iris size large because we want to be an anime girl. <laughs> Eye color. Now, I haven't fucked with heterochromia in this game yet, so I think I kind of want to... I think we're going to go with... That's a really pretty blue. And then maybe we'll go... Gold on the other. Yeah. That looks nice. Eyebrows. She looks a little angry. That's nice. Nose. I don't usually fret too much about the nose shape. That one looks nice. Mouth shape. She looks pretty good like that, but let's see. I think I like this one better. Lip color. Do we want light or dark lipstick? I think we'll go with dark lipstick. That's, I haven't done that yet. Ooh, that's really nice. We're going to go with that kind of magenta-y color. Well, it's magenta on here. It's kind of a dark purple, or something here. <laughs> uh, ear clasps. Let's give her both ear clasps. Sure. <clears throat> color. Let's make, um, let's make them gold. As gold as you can get them, anyway. Yeah, there we go. Facial features. Can't see anything like that. Um... We're not going to give her any of this stuff. Like, you give her a bandage or something, but we're not going to do that. Uh, what I am going to do is something I do for nearly all my characters, because I really like it, is um, we're going to give her face paint in heavy quotes. And um, it's not actually face paint. It's freckles. Um, assuming I can find a nice color. Oh, that looks good. Perfect. It's subtle. What happens if I make it dark? Okay, yeah, I like it light. It's subtle, but it adds character. And freckles are fucking cute, so I like them. Okay, what's she sound like? I think number one is what we're going to go for. And we can also see what her other voice emotes are going to be like. Yeah, you know what? I like her. I think she, she looks and sounds pretty good. Okay, now we're going to give her a birthday. Um, I usually just use my birthday. Okay, so they have a 12-month cal calendar like everybody. So um, I'm just going to do my birthday, which is January 19th. Now we have to pick a deity. Um, it doesn't matter too much, I'm pretty sure. It's just roleplay but we are going to kind of do that in this very light roleplay sort of thing um i'm kind of thinking halone she's the guardian deity of ishgard who we'll spend more time with in heaven's ward i kind of like this because she's armed with a bronze great shield so that kind of implies she's a tank and we're gonna do a tank character for this playthrough Menfina is definitely not. Thaliac is the wizard dude. Nymea, she's the goddess of fate. Limlane and navigation. Oscon, travelers and vagrants. Viragot, no. Ralgar is the god of war and destruction. Azema. Inquiry, Naldthal, Commerce, Nofika, Harvest, Abundance, Alphic, Change in Space. I think we're going to go with Haloni. We're going to be the Fiori. Yeah. Now, I am going to be a tank, as I said. Um, I've never really gotten too into tanking before. I did play a Marauder for a little while. I kind of want to go paladin though, which means I'm going to um, I'm going to start as a gladiator. So um, I think that's what we're gonna do. Okay, now we need to choose a name. Really, I didn't even think about this. I wonder if I'll actually get this. 
Oh my god, I did. Or did I? It's loading. I did. Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. Hey! Hey, you! You alright, lass? You were moaning something fierce for a while there. Feeling the effects of the Aether, I reckon. You'll get used to it, though, don't worry. You there, halt. What's all this about? Inspection. Men search the carriage. I'm just an honest peddler, friend, so uh, don't be too disappointed if you don't find nothing, eh? Mind your tongue, old man, lest I cut it out. Look, sir. Somnus. Honest peddler, was it? Since when do honest peddlers deal in prohibited herbs? You're in a lot of trouble, old man. You'll rot in a dungeon till the end of your days, unless you can afford the fine. Yeah, it's a shakedown. Business as usual. Amalja! Amalja! To arms! To arms! Seven Hells, consider this a warning. Now go, all of you. Yeah, in case nobody caught that, they were basically just trying to plant contraband to uh, bribe. Or collect a bribe, rather. Yeah, the Brass Blades are not known for their fairness. Phew, that kind of excitement ain't good for the heart. You better be careful around them blast blades. Bla brass blades, my god. Lass, bastards will have the shirt off your back if they fancy it. Like common bandits, they are only less honest. Thank the gods for sending some beast man to the rescue, huh? Hey, seeing as we've got a long ride ahead, you mind keeping me company till we arrive? 
Them youngins don't care much for conversation, you see. Brent's the name, and Pedlin's me trade. And judging by your unusual garments, I'll wager you're one of them new adventurers. I knew it. Going wherever the wind blows, seeking fortune and glory. Now that's what I call living. So long as you can avoid dying, I mean. Ain't no secret that adventuring's a risky business, these days especially. What was it that first attracted you to it? So... We're going to gain power. That's why we became an adventurer. Power, as in uh, power to do good, like protecting the weak and fighting for what's right and all that. Ah, I thought that's what you meant. Well, adventurers do get up to a lot of fighting, that's for sure. You'll never be short of a chance to polish your warcraft in this adventuring business. When you arrive in town, you'd best enroll at the Adventurer's Guild. They'll set you on the right path. And it wouldn't hurt to join a guild, neither. Ulda is home to a few, so you'll fancy learning how to fight with a sword, your fists, or even spells. You should think about, you should think about seeking one out. Just remember, though, there are more important things than fortune and glory, such as breathing. Ain't no point to being dead, and that's, no, ain't no profit in being dead, and that's a fact. By the by, is this your first trip to Ulda? It sure is. It is. Well then, let this journey to itinerant tell you the ins and outs of your destination. Ulda is ruled by the Sultana in name, but as most folks know, the Syndicate holds all the real power. Them and their monetarist cronies will happily get rid of her grace altogether. But that won't happen while she still commands the loyalty of the Royalists. And the Royalists are nothing if not loyal. These factions have long fought over power, throwing the weight of their wealth against each other, and it shows no sign of stopping. Of course, the Lizardmen, that's the Amalja, couldn't care less about Uldan politics. They have their own interests, see? And they ain't afraid to use force to serve them. They say war is a gift to peddlers, need, breed, and profit. Though it shames me to say it, I'm inclined to agree. Ah, at long last. Behold, Ulda, jewel of Thanalan, where folks turn sand into gold. Deep in the sun-baked south, surrounded by the shifting sands of an endless desert, she rises, a solitary rose amidst the dust and rock a symbol of defiance. Her name, Ulda. Even with the coming of the seventh Umbral Era, hope springs eternal for the mongers and merchants who vie for lost fortunes in this bustling oasis. As the twin faces of Nold Thal maintain their vigil over all that has been and shall be, the present proffers a brave soul. One whose arrival could mark the beginning of a new era of prosperity for the realm. And here's where we part ways, lass. I'm off to the markets to deliver me wares, then it's on to the high road for me. Here, I want you to have this. My thanks for putting up with me prattle. You never did tell me your name, though. Hey, but here's an idea. Become the sort of storied personage I can brag about having met, and I'll call a square. May the traders nurture our fortunes as they kindle the flames which burn within us all. For by fire are we reborn.
Oh, adventurer, over here. I mean you. Fresh off the carriage, by any chance? Eh? How can I tell? <laughs> Name's Wyman, and bi my business is knowing every bugger else's. Now then, what if I was to offer you some invaluable advice by way of welcome into our fair city? Free of charge, even. Just this once, like. Welcome to Ulda, the shining beacon of prosperity rising from the deserts of Thanalan. Please select a control scheme. We are going to be using mouse and keyboard. Of course, I already know how to move. Okay. We're not opening anything. We are in Ulda. This is one of three different openings that you can have depending on which class you choose. You could also go to the port city of Limza Laminza and the forest city of uh, Gridania. But because we chose Gladiator, the Gladiator's Guild is in Ulda, so we start in Ulda. Now I'm going to take just a minute here to clean up my UI. You guys won't have to watch that though. Okay, we're good. Let's go talk to this dude. I already know how to do this stuff, so we're not going to do, be doing any of the tutorials. This is basically just an introductory quest. Tis plain to anyone with eyes that you don't know your way around here. If I let you go wandering off down the nearest dark alley, you're certain to get mugged or worse, and I don't want that on my conscience. So before you go doing anything else, you'll want to head over to the quicksand and speak to Mimodi. She's the master of the Adventurer's Guild and can set you on the right path. Just take those steps over yonder and pass through the double doors. You'll find her inside. And that's as much as you're getting for free. Good luck with the adventure, an adventurer. Thank you, Wymond. You look creepy. I already know how to mess with quests. So we'll do as suggested and go over here. This is Momodi. She is the quicksand proprietress. And she runs the Adventurer's Guild in Ulda. Why, hello there. Who might you be? If you're looking to join the Adventurer's Guild, you've come to the right place. Name's Momodi, and I own this fine establishment, if it pleases you. I also manage the Adventurer's Guild here in Ulda, so you might say that looking after green adventurers like yourself is my vocation. And lucky for you, that is. Without someone like me to steer you right, you'd soon find yourself out in the middle of nowhere caught up in business you don't understand. Like our conflict with the Amalja, for example. They've been plaguing the Sultanate for Hanayan, oh, forever now. Then there's the Garlean Empire. None can say for sure what they're plotting these days, only that they are. Aye, the people drink and make merry, but underneath it all there's worry. Worry and a lingering feeling of loss. And little wonder, it's scarce been five years since the lesser moon cracked open like a giant egg, releasing an abomination intent on turning the realm into an eighth hell. So much was lost in the blink of an eye. T'was like the end of the world had come at last. But then things begin to get foggy. Everyone's got their own version of what happened next. Some of them two or three. You'd think people would remember something like that, but the fact is they don't. Nobody does. There is one thing the survivors agree on, though. The part played by a band of adventurers who laid down their lives for a realm that wasn't their own. They fought valiantly, and like so many others, they never returned. Deeds worth remembering, I'm sure you'll agree. It's just a shame our recollec recollections of those brave heroes are just as jumbled as those of the Calamity itself. Whenever we try to call their faces to mind, it's like they're standing between us and the midday sun, permanently silhouetted. I'll bet that sounds poetic to you, doesn't it? Well, it's not. It's bloody infuriating. But even if we can't remember them... We'll not let him be forgotten, and so we call him the Warriors of Light. 
and they'll forever stand as a shining example of what adventurers can achieve. That's why I welcome new arrivals like yourself to our fair city. All I ask is that you lend a helping hand and try to leave Ulda a better state than you found her. If you can promise that, I'll be happy to let you join the guild. And of course we'll do so. All right then, a promise is a promise now. I'm counting on you to help put your put the past behind us. We don't need people, no, we need people working and spending and bickering like the old days. And a happy and prosperous Ulda means more business for the quicksand too. Any road, let's make this official. Go ahead and write your name on the register, neat as you can. Foxy Games. Well, ain't that a charming name? Just rolls off the tongue, it does. Well, thank you, I picked it myself. Oh boy, I've never picked a silly name before. This is going to be interesting. All right, Miss Games, goddammit, I should have picked a better name. <laughs> on behalf of the Adventurers Guild, I officially... Please, sir, be merciful. Twelve is my witness. I swear to you, I'll bring you your money. Oh, God. Why is it always a fucking Lalafell? In the East, it is said that even a merciful god might be driven to vengeance if thrice blasphemed. Be grateful you were given a fourth chance to offend. You two, attend to this scum. No, please, mercy. Well, ain't that a sorry sight, nor an uncommon one, if I'm honest. Don't worry, though. If you work hard, I doubt you'll end up like him. Just the same, if you ever need a bit of advice on about one thing or another, pay me a visit. Just don't go bothering me every time you stub your bloody toe, all right? Of course, I do enjoy hearing a lady muse on the many manhoods of her acquaintance from time to time. Wait, what? Really? Okay. Any road, welcome to Uldah, Foxy. I never started in Uldah before. Take a moment to catch your breath, and I'll teach you a little bit about our fair city. And that's our first quest. It's funny, like, they're just gonna let that guy get his ass kicked by the fucking loan sharks or the gambling dudes, whatever they're called. Momodi wants you to perform three tasks. Okay, it's the same as every other city. Before you go charging off to find your fortune, I have a few basic tasks that I'd like you to perform so as to help you get to know the place. First of all, I want you to visit the Aetherite Plaza. To get there, head west from here till you reach Emerald Avenue, then look to the north. You should see a giant floating crystal called an Aetherite. If it weren't for Aetherites, traveling around Eorzea would be a damn sight more troublesome than it is. Of course, you still need to attune with them before you can use them, so be sure to do that with the one in the plaza. You ever attuned with an Aetherite before? If not, just lay your hand on the thing and you'll see what I mean. When you've done that, I want you to pay a visit to the Gladiators Guild over at the Colosseum. Assuming that sword ain't just for show, you might consider training there. And finally, I want you to visit the Sapphire Avenue Exchange over on the steps of Thal. Goods from all across Eorzea and beyond to turn up there every day. You'll have no trouble finding armor, weapons, or anything else a fledgling adventurer like yourself might need. You might say everything's for sale in Ulda, as long as you've got the gill. Just make sure you don't pay more than, you're, than you ought to. There's plenty as won't scruple to swindle unsuspecting foreigners like yourself, especially if they think no one's looking out for their best interests, which is why I'm giving you this letter. When you visit the exchange, find a gentleman named Cesaroga and give it to him. He'll be happy to tell you about the markets once he's read it. In short, then, visit the Aetherite, the Gladiators Guild, and the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. Simple. Oh, but before you go, a word of advice. While there's more than a few unsavory characters out there who'll try to take advantage of you, there are also some with honest-to-goodness problems who you should consider helping. A lot of folk are lured into this city by the promise of wealth and power, but most of them fail to realize that instead of chasing after, the, uh, after Gil the moment they get here, they ought to be making friends. Let it be known that you're willing to give as much as you get, and opportunities will come your way. Speaking of which, you should speak with the smith over yonder. Those lads always have some good advice for up-and-coming adventurers. Otherwise, that's about it from me. It's about time you got going. Oh, and let me know when you've finished, will you? That way I won't spend my days worrying that you've, you're down to your small clothes without a guild of your name.
Okay, now we have to go and talk to this dude. We actually probably don't. Alright, so the truth is you don't really need to talk to the smith. He gives you some information about, um, you know, being new to the game and all that. I'm not new, and ooh, look at this samurai over here. She looks pretty cool. That gooboo down there is not very cool, but she's pretty cool. She reminds me of, like, a character from Bleach or something with that cloak and the katana. My main is actually a samurai. Also, I realized, um, now that we're actually able to play and walk around a bit, I realized that I didn't really go into much detail about why I'm doing this. Why play an MMO from start to finish? Well, the first reason, of course, was I absolutely adore this game's story. Even the not-so-great parts, um, like A Realm Reborn... Yes, yes, yes. Um, A Realm Reborn is really slow, and um, I personally did not care much for Stormblood, which is the second expansion. But the story overall is just phenomenal, and I can't get enough of it. So the second reason is I haven't seen a lot of people play the story of this game from start to finish. And not everybody can afford a monthly subscription to play an MMO. It's just a tune to the Aether right here. You know, unfortunately, this game does have a monthly subscription. Uh, here we go. Hail, adventurer. Might you have come at the behest of Miss Momodi of the Quicksand? Excellent, which brings us to the matter of the attunement fee. That will be 100,000 gil, if you please. <laughs> Apologize. Or apologies, but I do so relish the op opportunity to make that jest. The look on your face is absolutely priceless. Ah, but the fact that you are so easily deceived suggests to me that you're unfamiliar with the use of aetherites. Allow me to explain. The crystalline agglomerations, that's a word, tap into ethereal energies and are primarily used as the means to travel safely from one place to the other. Perchance have you heard of return and teleport? Well, these teleportation spells make direct use of the aetherites and their, connected, and their connection to the flow of aether. Given that there is an aetherite in almost every corner of Eorzea, any adventurer with a mind to explore the realm will wish to seek out and attune herself to each and every one. But even if you have no intention of wandering beyond the Sultanate's borders, it would be prudent for you to attune yourself to any aetherites you encounter from now on. I pray you find that inf informative. Should you wish to learn more about aetherites or transportation magic, I should be happy to answer your questions. So basically, this is your ability to teleport from city to city, area to area, once, you, uh, once you've attuned to the Aetherite. And there are many smaller Aetherites throughout the city that make it easy to get around, which I'm going to go and attune to now, while I talk about the reasons behind this Let's Play. Uh, put it quite simply, not everybody can afford a um, monthly subscription to a game. And... I feel like that's a really unfortunate barrier to entry for what really is one of the best Final Fantasy stories ever told. And you get a lot of um, a lot of people who um, play the game on streams or whatever, but they skip the story. I can't understand how you could skip the story. I mean, maybe they, they realize that some people don't want to be spoiled and they want to play it themselves. But at the same time... Some people watch these games because they can't play them themselves. So that's the main reasoning behind this, because I feel like every Final Fantasy fan should experience this game's story in some way. And I am going to do all of the really important stuff, uh, all the main story, all of the side story stuff that influences the main story. We'll go to the Gladiators Guild after. I get all the Aetherites. Um, and I'm going to try and do as much side content as possible. Now, this playthrough is going to be a bit of a learning experience for me as well. Because I don't tank. Ever. I've tanked a little bit. 
on my main. And by the way, you can um, you can switch jobs at will in this game. You don't have to stick with Gladiator or whatever you start with. But I kind of wanted to start one from scratch um, on a brand new character because getting through the story quests is one of the best ways to level up. Leveling up afterward is a bit of a grind, and I don't particularly enjoy it very much. This game is very story heavy, and... <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, and you are... Ho! Oh, a newly come adventurer, but of course. Yes, I am Cesaroga. What can I do for you? Ah, would he would have me teach you the ways of the marketplace. Very wise. As for my fee... What, you expect me to do it for free? Surely you jest. My dear adventurer, when you ask an Uldan for a favor, you should at least try to make it worth his while. Judging by your garb, I rather doubt you could afford my services, but the fact you offer nothing is laughable. Well, here, have some paper. Oh, Mistress Mamodi instructed you to ask me uh, to seek me out, did she? Uh, consider yourself fortunate to have such influential friends. I mean, we just met. I shall be brief, and you shall be attentive. You stand in the Sapphire Avenue Exchange, the busiest and most profitable marketplace in the Sultanate. Being advantageously situated in relation to the other city-states, Uldah's markets have ever served as both the literal and figurative centers of Eorzean commerce. All the great overland trade routes lead to our city, and the majority of maritime trade between Vilbrand and Aldenard passes through our ports. Because of this, countless companies and consortia have chosen Ulda as their base of operations. They see to it that this marketplace is awash in merchants and moneylenders day and night. Anything a man could ever desire can be purchased here, provided he has sufficient funds. Surely there's something you seek, adventurer? A deadlier sword, perhaps, or a shinier trinket? Whatever it was, and whatever it is you want, the exchange will have it. To the north, you will find merchants peddling armor and accessories, curatives, and crafting materials. And to the south, you will find weapons, tools, and an assortment of other useful items for sale. Seek out a particular merchant, or browse to your heart's content, but do try to remain aloof should you find something that piques your interest. Decisions made in the heat of the moment are usually unwise, especially where coin is concerned. M. That is all the complimentary aid you shall receive from me, and far too much for my taste. My regards to Momodi. Now off with you. Yes, in case you you haven't figured it out by now, the people of Uldar really like their money. By the way, I know he said that you can go and uh, buy swords and armor and stuff. We're going to do exactly none of that. Okay, here we are at the Gladiator's Guild. We're going to do our first class quest, or job quest. They're not classes in this game, they're jobs. Welcome to the Gladiator's Guild, friend. Tell me, are you new to the thrills of Mortal Kombat? No, I've played those games before. Haha, <laughs> bad jokes. Well, whether you are or not, you're new to us. If you would take your place in these hallowed halls, you must be willing and ready to undergo the most rigorous training. You must endure cuts and bruises beyond counting, and like as not, far worse. A daunting prospect, I concede, but there is no other way if you mean to take to the bloodstands one day. And why wouldn't you? The Colosseum is the only the most celebrated place of public entertainment in all, in all of Ulda. Why else, you know, where else could a poor man amass a fortune so vast as to one day allow him to claim a seat on the syndicate? Ah, there's not an Uldan alive who isn't inspired by the rise of the self-made man. And there is no truer embodiment of this than the gladiator who wins riches and fame with his sword. Throughout its long and storied history, this guild has nurtured countless champions. Our training methods are second to none, and our members ever strive to develop new techniques. If you desire true glory, to fight and triumph bits the roar of ten thousand voices, then this is where you belong, adventurer. Think of it. Think of your legacy. And if your soul stirs, join us. We will. What will it be? Will you rise above the masses and, and inscribe your name in legend, or will you resign yourself to mediocrity and die in obscurity? Well, that's harsh. 
A decision you shan't regret. One moment, make way for Foxy Games. Fresh meat coming through. Now then, before your enrollment can be considered complete, you must present yourself to First Sword Mila. Seek her out and obtain her approval. That would be her. Aye, I heard, Lulusu. So you're Foxy Games. Tis a good, strong name. Well, thank you. I made it myself. On behalf of the Gladiators Guild, allow me to welcome you. I am Mila, Guildmaster here. So you wish to study our arts. I presume you have your reasons for choosing the sword over all other weapons. Perhaps you think it easiest to learn. A sword is a simple weapon, but to wield a blade well is anything but simple. For every Colosseum champion to emerge from our ranks, there have been countless disappointments who failed to achieve greatness. Bear that in mind before you answer me, Foxy, for I do not ask this question lightly. Have you the strength to live by the sword, and, if it be your fate, die by it? Of course I do. Then welcome, Gladiator, to your new home. Let's not waste time, shall we? I would gauge your aptitude for the sword. Just outside the gates of Ulda, you'll find plenty of marmots, hornets, and shrews. Slay three of each and return here when finished. A simple task, but essential to your training nonetheless. Now go. Yes, we're going to do the standard MMO quest of uh, killing small animals to uh, satisfy some rando. Before we do that, though, we're going to quickly run back to the Adventurer's Guild. And I realize I probably could have just teleported there. But that's okay. And we're back at the quicksand. How was your tour of the city, Foxy? Got lost, did you? Aye, well, Ulda's a big place with lots to see and do. But wandering around aimlessly don't pay the bills. If you're serious about making a living here, you'll need to remember where things are. So when you go exploring, explore like you've got a purpose, hey? Alright then. All that's left for is for you to work hard, make money, and spend it here. Yeah, sure. Oh, my next quest is available at level 4. I'm currently halfway through level 1. So, we'll go out and uh, smack some animals. Okay, yeah. So there was one other thing I wanted to do before we go. I just wanted to grab my... Um, veteran rewards on this server. Yes, I know how that works. So I'll grab these, and I'll grab... Come on. Come on. Come on. And I'll grab these. Uh, these are veteran rewards. You get those for being subscribed for a certain amount of time. It is cumulative. You don't have to do it all in a row. Basically, I just got Cloud and Zidane's outfits from Final Fantasy VII and IX, respectively. I think my next one is Squall's outfit from 8. I'm not sure. There's a lot of uh, a lot of throwbacks to older Final Fantasy games here. Um, actually, Shadowbringers in particular was a huge throwback to Final Fantasy 3. Shadowbringers being the most recent expansion. Okay, so we're out of Ulda right now. We're in uh, central Thanalan, which is the desert kind of region, and we have to go and murder some animals. It's a pretty standard MMO fare. The uh, global cooldown, however, yes, I know how experience works, I know how item binds work. Um, the global cooldown for abilities, though, is pretty high in this game compared to, say, World of Warcraft. So you have a bit more time to plan your abilities and weave different abilities together. I have an ability. Very nice. This increases my physical damage dealt. We're going to stick that on my second bar here. Just for the hell of it. I'll work out how to set up my bars eventually. Alright, just a few more animals to murder. Uh-oh, this one's level 3. Will I survive? Mm. 
Now, right now, I don't have a shield. Gladiators typically are sword and shield, I believe. But screw it, I just, <laughs> I just have a sword. Now there is battle music in this game. I do not have it on. It gets really repetitive. We'll keep the battle music on for dungeons. That's really it. Okay, we finished our first quest. Let's go ahead and talk to Mila again. Welcome back, Foxy. I take it you dispatch the beast and with ease. Rest assured, there'll be far greater challenges to come. If you wish to master the sword, you must test yourself against a wide variety of foes. To this end, I present you this hunting log. It contains information on creatures ideal for a, gladi a gladiator in training. You will doubtless gain valuable experience should you seek out and slay them. It is only with such practice that you will be they will recognize and eliminate the deficiencies in your technique. Your training under me shall continue once the haft sits so snugly in your hand that you cannot imagine holding anything else. Until then, Foxy. So I have to be level 5. Which is a bit troublesome, because... My other quest is uh, level, I don't even know, level 4 or 5, something like that. But that's no problem. We now have monsters to kill. Alright, we're out in western Thanalan now. We've got some more animals to smack with a sword. Now my plan for this Let's Play is to learn tanking, kind of as I go along... I feel like it would the easiest way to do that would be through going through the story again. And I want to do this so that I can play a Gunbreaker. Um, it's extremely puzzling to me why Gunbreakers were made tanks. But Square Enix, you know, maybe, I guess they knew what they were doing. For those of you who aren't familiar with Final Fantasy VIII, Gunbreakers are fucking awesome. They use swords with revolver handles attached to them. Does it make any sense? No. Is it cool? You bet your ass it is. Hey, here's an iconic Final Fantasy monster, the Cactuar. They look so fucking weird, though. Like, they don't even look like Cactuar. Oh well, it's gonna die anyway. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, the fate system is kind of like... Um, World Quests and World of Warcraft a little bit. Except these appear a bit more uh, frequently. Hey, nice, I leveled up. And the music stopped. I'm not sure why. Riot Blade, nice. So... Do I hit Riot Blade first? No, I hit Fast Blade first and then Riot Blade. Okay, cool, so... Yeah, you can combo your attacks in this game. Um, most abilities have a combo with something else. So you don't want to just be spamming the same ability over and over again. Oh yeah, by the way, fates have a certain time limit to them. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this one. There's only two minutes left. I should be able to finish this, no problem. By the way, that's a giant tortoise. It's level 17. Needless to say, it would squash me, so I'm not fucking with it. There we go. Finished. Experience and a little bit of money. Truly wasn't that worth it, but we did it anyway. Oh, there's some shit going on in here. Somebody popped up some kind of spell. Oh my god, that little fairy outfit is adorable. A little butterfly thing going on there. That's cute. All right. People keep popping spells in here. Ah, Foxy, I take it that you and your sword have become better acquainted. Then I will now instruct you on another fundamental aspect of what it means to be a gladiator, commanding an opponent's attention. As gladiators, we are trained to engage enemies at close range, weathering their attacks as we deliver our own. However, there are times we must do battle alongside allies whose talents are not the same as our own. Jesus Christ, that's obnoxious. In such a situation, your role is not to slay the enemy in front of you, but rather defend the man beside you. We do this by eliciting the enmity of our opponents through attacks and techniques designed to incite their hatred. 
you must learn to draw the enemy's attention to yourself and to trust in your stout constitution to endure. In, doing, uh, in so doing, you protect your weaker comrades who would otherwise perish. So, tanking. To help you better understand this, there's a task I would have you perform. It just so happens that Momodi of the Quicksand has requested our assistance. A gang of Lemons and Marauders has paraded into town and begun harassing people outside her establishment. Men like these prey on the weak, but will turn tail and flee at the first sign of defiance. You need not resort to violence, it will suffice to show them that th you are not afraid of them, and will not tolerate their behavior. Seek out the Lamentans and make your presence known by bellowing, Face me, Marauder. In this way, you will protect the people of Ulda as you would your allies in battle. This guy just, he looks like one of the main characters. That's ridiculous. The hair, the face, that's insane. Okay, so we have to go back to the quicksand. Alright, where are these assholes? Here's one of them. So I just do slash me? What? You're blaming me because this little shite shat his own pants? Well, bugger him and bugger you too. Yeah, that's right. Walk away. You know your friend here is a 12 damn cheat? Thinks he can charge us more because we're foreigners, but he'll get his own back. Mark me words. Well, I bet I'm going to have to kill all of you at some point. Oi, come on now. He was disrespecting my proud sea wolf heritage. Fine, I'll leave the bastard be, but we ain't finished. God, the, the worst thing about starting in Limsa is fucking talking to these people. The hell's your problem? Maybe she likes her men rough. <laughs> what are you supposed to be, a bleeding lady in waiting? But it don't matter, you've gone and spoiled the mood. Speaking of the quicksand, I can actually get my next quest, I believe. My next main story quest, but there's also some guy I need to tell to fuck off here, too. His name is Farmoral. That's a retarded name. Just who the hells do you think you're speaking to, maggot? I'm Farmoral, the Driven, and me and me bloody marauders have been raving so long mothers scare their children with tales about us. Don't believe me words, and I'll let me axe do the talking. Oh, I would love that, actually. Oh-ho, this is lively, even for the quicksand. You two are going to put on a show for us? Who's this guy? What's this? Another god's damn fool? Show some respect when you talk to... Farl Murrow the Driven, leader of a troop of bloody mummers or some such. I heard you the first time. Your voice carries quite well. Then unless you want me to split your skull in with the axe, you better... He recognizes something. It's a cool sword. That sword, it couldn't be frenzy. But only the sword of Nald would... Bloody hells, it is you. You know I've never been one to stand back and watch. Mind if I join the fun? Bro, I don't need you or your goatee. Begging your pardon, sir. Why do they always do that? Ah, oh, looks like it's just you and me. Standing up to that Leminzen was quite brave of you, and quite foolish. I think I like you, Gladiator. Name's Aldis, and I'll buy you a drink. And I'd buy you a drink, but I'm afraid I just spent the last of my coin. I used to be a young Gladiator like you. Back then, I... Ah, but that hardly concerns you. These days, I'm just an explorer of the unexplored, a seeker of... As yet unknown experiences. Like that beautiful stranger keeping my bed warm right now. Gods, I've missed this city. This wonderful desert jewel of debauchery and sin. Now, if you'll excuse me. Well, you're a real winner. Anyway. We have to talk to Momodi anyway. 
I swear if I hadn't seen all this with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it was him. Everyone here thought he died years ago. Listen, Foxme, do me a favor and don't tell Mila about meeting all this, all right? She doesn't need this sort of drama, oh dear. Why? Well, let's just say some folk ain't good for one another, so he's an old flame. Oh dear. Let's get this quest while we're here. Well, younglin, how are you finding our fine Ulda, then? Got your bearings about you, then? If so, perhaps it's time you ventured beyond the city walls. I mean, I already did that. The bustling streets of Ulda are one thing, but the wilds of Thanalan, that's another altogether. I know a bloke you might fancy speaking to, and he you. Name of Papa Sean. You'll find him over at the Ulda Dispatch Yard. No doubt he'll have some work for you. The dispatch Yard's over in central Thanalan. Just head out the door, across the hall, and you'll see the Gate of Nald staring right back at you. Pass through it and head east, and you'll come before, upon it before long. There's dangers beyond the wall, though, more than I'd care to count. Nothing too terrible, mind you, but feisty enough to attack if you draw near. Don't say nobody cared enough to warn you. Right, we'll do that after we go back to Mila. I have already heard of your exploits at the quicksand, Foxy. You did well to send those marauders packing. I wish I could say we've heard the last of them. Alas, we've received reports of axe-wielding raiders assaulting merchants traveling through the Scorpion Crossing. It seems words will not suffice after all. I want you to finish what you've begun. Head to Western Thanalan and see that Farmo the Driven and all those who shared in his crimes never trouble the people of Ulda again. The day-night cycle in this game, by the way, is much quicker than that of other MMOs. Um, not sure the actual time dilation going on here. But, um, Eorzea time, it's currently 8.17pm. Local time, it's almost 1 in the morning, because I just got back from work not long ago. Now, I realized I went to this guy when I meant to go to the, uh... <laughs> meant to go to the other one. But that's okay. Well, you certainly look the part of an adventurer, my friend. Might you be the good soul Momodi advised me to expect? I am Papa Sean, station master of this humble dispatch yard. An empty title, I assure you. I truly am no more than a tired old Lalafell passing his final years in quiet and solitude. Twelve no, there have been plenty of both these last five years since the calamity struck. The devastation was vast. Yet now, true old ons work together, doing all in our power to, to rebuild what was laid to ruin. By the sweat of our brows and the love of our home, we have rebuilt Ulda to the grandeur and majesty that you see today. The railways which run through this dispatch yard, too, were born of the noble efforts of great many souls. But there is still much work to be done. The wounds left by the calamity run deep. Isolated areas beyond our lines of supply remain, and there are places yet wanting for relief and restoration. Ulda needs the aid of you and your brethren, friend. In fact, never has our need been more dire. Which brings me to the point, I suppose. I do believe I may have some work suited to one of your ability. Yeah, level up. Total Eclipse. Blivers an attack. Da, 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 da. Oh, it's, uh... Hmm, okay. So I'm actually going to stick this somewhere else. Maybe, maybe in my two slot for now. This is my uh, AOE attack, so I just spin around, and that that reaches a long way. Holy shit! Since you've come all this way, perhaps you can perform an errand for me. It just so happens a number of sentries have been sent to guard the area, a dispatch to the dispatch yard, as it were. They have long been away from the shade and feather beds of the city. The hot days and cold nights can play hells on the mind and body out here. It isn't much, but go and give them these twilight pretzels, would you? I find comfort food always helps when I feel like killing myself. Oh my god. Dude. A little too fucking real. Anyway, I see that we have to kill these shrews for a hunt log, so... Unfortunately for you, shrews, it's time for you to be murdered. Alright, now we get to go give pretzels to the to the guards. And you know what? I, I'm not gonna lie. A pretzel, a pretzel sounds pretty fucking great right about now. Oh, 
Halt, madam, I'm going to have to ask you to put the pretzel on the ground and place your hands above your head. How about I just hand it to you? State your name and business. A Twilight Pretzel from Papa Sean? By the gods, forgive me. You could say this new post has my nerves in a twist. I'm terribly sorry for that. <clears throat> yes, well, you may rest assured that the dispatch yard is safe so long as I stand watch. Please give Papa Sean my thanks and tell him I only wish I could repay the favor. You can start by never making that joke again. Fucking dad jokes. Western front clear. Eastern front clear. For me, from Papa Sean, a Twilight Pretzel. My favorite. How did he know? Can't fight an empty stomach, can I? Actually, I can't fight on any stomach. <laughs> I suppose you could say I have no stomach for fighting. Then why the fuck are you out here? And one more. Twelve, save me. Scorching days, freezing nights. This post will be the end of me. A twilight pretzel? Don't mind if I do. Ah, oh, now that's a refreshing God's damn pretzel. I feel reborn. Dude, that's exactly how I feel about pretzels. It's gotta be soft pretzels, though. You know, crunchy pretzels have their place, but nothing beats a good, warm, soft pretzel with mustard and salt. You've returned, and with a few deal, uh, deal fewer pretzels, I see. Tell me, how fair are Sultan's sworn sentries? Do they have anything to report at all? What? Nothing? Are you sure? I... Oh, dear. Take this for your troubles, then, and stay a moment. There is more I would ask of you. <laughs> Gave me some potions. Foxy, I have just this moment. No, no, the time from concealment is past. The truth is, even before I had you deliver those pretzels, I was privy to some most unsettling news... Which is the real reason I sent you to meet those Sultan Sworn. Oh dear, what's going on? A young noblewoman from a very prestigious family has run away from home, and I have been ordered to see her safe to her safe return. The Sultan Sworn you met earlier assisting with a search. Alas, it seems they found no trace of her. I apologize for not being frank with you from the start, but we must proceed with caution. Should word of her disappearance spread, I fear others with less honorable motives may join the hunt. And should we allow her to come to any harm, not even a hundred beheadings would be punishment enough. That cannot happen, Foxy. It must not. I need you to help me find her. Yeah, we'll help. Praise the Twelve, I knew I could count on you. I've instructed the others to expand the search, but Thanalan is vast, and there are only so many of us. The young noblewoman's name is Lady Lilira. I want you to go south and look for her in the vicinity of the Sultan Tree. Good luck. Oh, uh, how much you want to bet this is just one big Romeo and Juliet reference. Alright, we're here. Here she is. Oh, Sultan Tree. Now we're going into an instance battle. I, I know how this works. It means we're going to have to fight. After a small cutscene, of course. Oh, Sultan Tree, hallowed spirit of my line, forgive my weakness. My failings have cost us dear. Show yourself. <sighs> As you command, O oh Lilira. Forgive my selfish desire to assure your welfare. Don't be caught requesting an escort. Simply pretend we never met and continue on your way. We both know I can do no such thing. It isn't safe for you here alone. It isn't safe for anyone. Not with this etheric disturbance. It's as though the dead are watching us. And I'd prefer not to join them. If it's all the same to you. 
Ah, you must be the one that Papa Sean mentioned. Congratulations on finding our elusive young charge. You'll have to forgive her impetuousness. What she lacks in discipline, she makes up for in stubbornness. You should return with us. The station master will be eager to thank Lady Lilira's protector in person. Oh no. Alas, the station master will have to wait. Dear Lilira, for my sake, please stay out of harm's way. As for you, dear friend, for Lilira's sake, please stay in harm's way. All right, so we have a dashing rogue to help us out. <laughs> Aptly named Handsome Stranger. We'll learn more about him as the game goes on. Suffice, to, suffice it to say, he is on our side. It also pulls way more aggro than I do. And I do not do a lot of damage, that is for sure. Lovely, it brought friends. I'll take care of them. More of them? Really, now, there are limits to our hospitality. More? Wow. It's just about dead. And now it is. First rule of adventuring. If you see a shiny rock, pick it up. Crystal Vera. I am Hydaelyn, all made one. A light there once was that shone throughout this realm, yet it has since grown dim. And as it hath faltered, so hath darkness risen up in its stead, presaging an end to life. For the sake of all, I beseech thee, deliver us from this fate.
The power to banish the darkness dwelleth in the crystals of light. Journey forth and lay claim to them. By thy deeds shall the crystals reveal themselves to thee. Only believe, for the light liveth in thy heart. Shine thy light on all creation. Ah, coming around now. Would you mind telling me what that was? Hmm, if I only knew. A denizen of the Void, at any rate. The Void sent? Yeah, but how? The question isn't how, but who. We're not dealing with bookless bandits. Don't suppose the answer came to you in a dream? No sooner did you fell the beast than you fell asleep. Too much ether, no doubt. Interesting. I hadn't considered the crystal. But of course, this changes everything. Hmm? Oh, just thinking aloud. At any rate, we haven't a moment to spare. I must return and report this at once. I leave Lady Lilira in your capable hands. How dare you pass me about like a swaddled babe? I shall return and tell them myself. As you wish, your impetuousness. I suspect we shall meet again before long. Until then, do try and stay awake. Okay, so that was a bit of a long cutscene. Um, that character we just saw, I wasn't sure what to think of him at first when I first played through this game, but I really did grow to like him. So, seeing him here in, um, in Thanalan is really nice. Depending on where you start, you meet different characters first. Alright, back to Papa Sean. Thank the gods you've returned. You had us all so worried. You do realize what would happen if a person of your noble stature were to be injured or worse. Why, her grace the sultana would be beside herself with grief. And so would her subjects. I dare say they'd be weeping in the streets. But I have already given you cause to weep, Papa Shun. You and the people of Ulda. Please, you're... You're not to say such things. We will find it, I swear to you. 
It is not my place to make demands, my lady, but I beg you, please stay out of harm's way. I apologize for causing you undue worry, Papa Sean. I shall refrain from traveling unescorted in the future. I cannot thank you enough, Foxy. I understand you fought bravely to protect Lady Lilira from void sent fiends. For your gallant service, you deserve all the riches in the royal vaults. Alas, a small token of my gratitude is the best I can offer. Well, it can't be that easy. Hmm? A sarcastic man with a strange contraption strapped to his shoulder? I see you met Thancred. He's a scholar who spent his days tra uh, investigating oddities like the. Uh, yeah. He's a scholar who spends his days investigating oddities in the ether. Rather too fond of the sound of his own voice for my liking, but perfectly harmless. As for you, Foxy, you are just the sort of adventurer we need around here. I pray you show the same kindness to the people of Thanalan as you did us today. Alright, let's go ahead and grab this quest. You're an adventurer, yes? If you're not otherwise occupied, I have a favor to ask. I resolved to re repay a, de a debt of gratitude, which I owe to the owner of the coffer and coffin. For this purpose, I have purchased from the royal plantations a prodigiously plump pumpkin, a particularly popular piece of produce. Alas, I cannot part this place to procure and proffer the pumpkin. You see, the scheduled shipment from the Nanawa mines, for which I wait, is late. I would prevail upon you to pick up the pumpkin in my stead and see it safely to the coffer and coffin. Present this receipt of purchase to Gagari at the Royal Plantations and she will yield it to you. I apologize for asking you to attend to this time-consuming task, but I truly accept your assistance. Bro, the fucking alliteration... Totally unnecessary, but I love it. If C.C. Doa doesn't come calling soon, this particular, this spectacular specimen shall sadly be past its prime. He's literally right over there. Oh, so you're here to deliver this decadent delight. I can not I can say with confidence that any Gwemu would be grateful for such a grand gift. Here we go with the alliteration again. Here's the pumpkin. I hope it meets with Roger's approval. Fresh produce is somewhat scarce in these parts, and as such, we are always deluged with demand. You know the way to Coffer and, Co uh, Coffer and Coffin, correct? It is beyond the bridge to the northwest. Look for a place where the local laborers lounge. I can't. That's, that's quite a distance, and I really want to do this uh, gladiator quest, so that's what we're going to do. Here we are. Let's speak with this nervous merchant over here. They tore me from my saddle and took everything I own. Bring my goods back to me, I beg of you. Okay. Looks like those marauders from Limza are up to no good. Apparently they just decided to drop everything. Also, we've joined a fate. Oh, hello. Here's somebody who wants to die. Oh yeah, if you ever see orange spots on the ground, don't stand on them. That's where your enemy is attacking. Also, this fate is a thing again. Oh hey, it's him again. Farmer the Driven. Farmer the Pathetic. Seriously, this guy sucks. Okay, now we can hand over this guy's sack. <laughs> I'm so mature. Twelve bless you, adventurer. If it weren't for good women like you, I'd never leave home. Alright, that's done. And we can go back to Mila. Are these guys whores? 
No, they've got axes on their backs. But look at what they're wearing. They must be like mercenary whores. Okay, we're back. Well, look at that fucking weapon. It's huge. Holy fucking shit. And wow, look at this dashing character. Aw, oh, red mage outfit's gone. Oh well. Good, it is finished. And with that, this stage of your training is complete. This time your enemies were ill-behaved ruffians, but who knows what manner of opponents you will face in the future. Regardless, I have faith that you will do well. Master your sword, and you shall master yourself. Now then, there will be work for you in the days to come. Return to your training, Foxy. We will speak again. What have we got? We get a new sword. We can make, get a custom-made cuirass. A leather eye patch. Some gloves. Or some boots. Hmm... I mean, it hardly matters. I decided on the eye patch, just because we don't have any headgear yet. But we're also going to hide it because fuck eye patches. So we look the same as ever, but we also have a new sword. It's not a crazy looking sword, but it's better than our old one. So, that's going to be it for the first episode. Let me know in the comments if you feel like this is a good idea. Um, I'm just going to keep doing it anyway, even if you don't, but let me know anyway. Until then, I'm Foxy Games, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.